Hello, welcome back again. This is a presentation about the larger picture in which climate change and health unfolds, about ethics, justice, equity, development, and what do we need to know how these issues affect um, climate policy and health policy. You see here the cumulative emissions since industrialization and you see in proportional size the countries in to the extent to which they have contributed to uh, global greenhouse gas uh, concentrations. And you see of course that the northern countries are dominating and in the south you see almost no uh, contribution. And here is the impact graph which is just the reverse um, and this is so unfair and unjust that uh, your, your blood could boil, if you like. Um, but that's the case and we need to bear this in mind for climate uh, negotiations. The inequity dimensions are many, not only north-south, but also whether you are nearer to the equator or not, whether you're a small island state or whether you are living at the coastline. So it's very geographically different how much health impact you will, you will get. Poverty is a high risk factor in any case for health and for the climate uh, change effects to health in addition. Age, the same thing, the elderly and the, the young, the very young, are very vulnerable, for example, to uh, temperature extremes. Gender is another of these inequity dimensions and um, this is intuitive. Poor countries and poor households, like this picture here in a slum of uh, an Indian town, make it very intuitive that climate impact here where you have no drainage, where you have no, um, no barriers against inundation, no, uh, that uh, this is more um, vulnerable, this population, than uh, in non-poor settings. The elderly, here's a picture from uh, Burkina Faso, are known to suffer m most from, for example, heat in Germany as much as in, in Africa. I mentioned already the, um, the health risk for mothers and children, uh, for example, by local air pollutants, climate active air pollutants, and uh, this is uh, very known and well published. Here is a graph that shows the Human Development Index on the vertical uh, axis. So you more developed you are, the higher the dot of your country is, and to the right you see the vulnerability to climate change. And in, in one sentence, the less developed you are, your country is, the more vulnerable it is. So it's not only about uh, physical resources, it's about development, which is education and, and many other dimensions. And we fear that the gains in development that we have achieved in the past could well be reversed through climate change. This graph shows you um, the, the, the wordings of different approaches in health and climate policy. On the left you see uh, what does the policy want. A policy that wants to, to mm, counter the root cause of a problem is called in health primary prevention. In climate policy, it's called mitigation. Just have to accept this. Uh, it's a little bit bewildering. The next line is measures to address a problem as early as possible is called adaptation, early warning and surveillance in climate policy. And in our health terms, it is secondary prevention. You want to diagnose a disease as early as possible before it uh, generates symptoms. We do screening. And the last line is, what do you call policies or measures to manage a damage that is already done? And here again, climate policy, it's adaptation, and in health policy terms, it's treatment. It's uh, rehabilitation and treatment. And the last slide, and that finishes this a little bit arcane policy debate, is about accepted principles in the climate community for a policy debate, for example, at the end of the year. The precautionary principle is very valuable because everybody agrees that you must act, that the national, international community must act before full knowledge. So uh, because the potential consequences, particularly in health, could be vast, you need to act before you have full knowledge. A no regret strategy is a funny name, means it's good to do something that is not only good to counter the health effects of climate change, but it's good in itself. Like 
malaria control. So let's put more money in malaria control because it's probably a health effect of climate change, but it's also an important problem in and of itself. And the next three points uh, are arguments that are really pushing the world community to a transfer of money and of technology. Because the North has created the problem, and because of all these inequity issues, we have accepted, the international community has accepted that we require financial and technology transfers from rich to poor. So not only do we have to reduce the um, greenhouse gases, not only do we have to find ways to adapt to the already commit, committed climate change, but we have to transfer resources from rich to poor. And that is the how to address all these inequities. Thank you very much.